St. Mark's Gospel, the fourth chapter, verses 35 through 41. Very familiar text of scripture. Again, on this Father's Day, may God bless all of the fathers and the memories of fathers and to everyone that fulfills a father's role in somebody's life. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. If you have it, say amen. I'm going to read the book of the reading. I'm going to ask that we will read verse 41 together. Mark chapter 4, beginning with verse 35. And the same day, when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with them other little ships. There arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder parts of the ship, asleep on a pillow. They awoke him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? He arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. Amen. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Shall we read verse 41 together? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the worship that has already been going on in this place. We thank you for every soul, every heart, every mind that is located in this room. Father, we thank you for their life because that proves that you are still a good God and your mercy is still effective. Now, Father, as, we, as you use me to your glory to declare a word from you, let me speak only what you have given. Father, remove me from this place for I am mindful than ever before. It's not about me, but it's all about you. To, we give you the glory, we give you the praise, because we can do nothing without you, but we can do all things through you. It's in Jesus' precious and powerful name, the people of God said together, amen. amen. Grab your, you may be seen in the presence of the Lord. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, happy Father's Day. The preacher's going to talk about, let's cross. Now turn to your other neighbor, look at them like you're mad at them, like they done stole your steak right off your plate, and say, neighbor... Pray for the preacher. He's going to talk about let's cross. Amen. Somebody give me an amen. I'm not going to be long. I know y'all got reservations at Papa Do's and Golden Corral and all of this stuff. So y'all just give me a few amens and, and I'll leave you alone. I'll leave you alone here on this Father's, on this Father's Day. Several, for several months now, those who don't know me personally, I'm a frugal individual. I'd rather see money in my bank account than on my wrist. Amen. And, and for several months I have been debated whether or not to purchase a new vehicle. And I went back and forth and back and forth until two weeks ago when I tried to leave for work and put my key in the ignition and the car didn't say a word. At that moment, I picked up the phone and called the closest dealership and say, I'll be there within the hour. Uh, it was interesting here, Salem, that it took a breakdown to tell me that it was time to upgrade. I wish I had a witness here. And God has a way of allowing some stuff to break down that you should have gotten rid of a long time ago to let you know that it's time to move up to a better level. I got news for somebody this morning. There's some stuff in your life breaking down. It may be God telling you that it's time to upgrade. How many of us are holding on to stuff we know ain't working? Patching up stuff we know is breaking down. Trying to super glue this and duct tape that. Trying to hold on to what we know is costing us money and costing us time and effort. But until it all, I wish I had a witness here. And, and sometimes God has to allow it to completely break down in order that you know that it's time to upgrade. 
For God can change your level of life either through encouragement or frustration. He told the man at the pool of Bethesda, take up your bed and walk. That's encouragement. But when blind Bartimaeus tried to get Jesus' attention, the louder he cried, the louder the crowd cried and told him to shut up. That's frustration. Uh, whenever God sees the people of God living below your potential, I just want you to know you just qualified for divine intervention. Whenever God looks at your life and he sees you living on a level that is below your potential and your destiny, for you do know he says, I've come that you might have life and that more abundantly. And the reason God intervenes is because we have a tendency to get comfortable where we are. Uh, Y'all going to help me preach this thing here. Uh, yet God has never designed any life for comfort because comfort often births complacency. When you get comfort, you begin to get lax on your effort. When you get comfortable, you diminish your motivations. When you get comfortable, you now have low expectations. Uh, Deut Deuteronomy, let me tell you like this, Deuteronomy 32 and 11 uh, illustrates God's relationship with Israel by describing an eagle stirring her nest. The reason she stares the nest is because she's announcing to the young eagles that it's time for a transition. Because the nest was originally constructed to be an extremely comfortable place. Um, but after the babies are weaned and it's time for them to learn how to fly on their own, the mother exposes some thorns and some rough places in the nest. In other words, the stirring makes the nest extremely uncomfortable. What was once a comfortable place now becomes an uncomfortable place. It's letting the young eagles know that the nest is not a permanent place. I wish I had a witness here. Uh, in other words, you can't stay here forever. Uh, that's why Jesus tells his disciples, let us cross over to the other side. Because you can't fly in the nest. You can only fly outside of the nest. And unless the nest becomes uncomfortable, uh, you will spend your life in a nest when you were destined to fly in the air. Yeah. Y'all going to walk with me here. Uh, th this is the difference between eagles and chickens. Uh, chickens walk by design, but eagles walk by choice. I wish I had a witness here. I said uh, chickens walk by design, but, but eagles walk by choice. Uh, and, and it does not make sense to walk when you have the ability to fly. It, it does not make sense to walk because when you're walking, it'll take you a long time to get to where you're going. Why don't you just use the wings that God gave you? I wish I had a witness here. Uh, that's why you got to be careful who you hang around. If you're going to be an eagle, you got to hang around eagles. Because if you hang around chickens long enough, you'll stop flying and start walking. I, I wish, do I got any eagles in the room this morning? Do I got anybody know God has made you to be an eagle? God has made you to fly to high places. God has made you to fly above storms and above tribulations. But if you hang around with chickens, eventually you will have a chicken mentality. You will eat what folk throw down. I, I wish I had a witness here. Uh, and, uh, somebody ought to say it's time to shift. It's time to shift. It doesn't make sense to walk when God has given you the ability to fly high. Um, the devil just got mad because somebody just redefined your situation. The attack is not sent to destroy me, but to alert me that it's time to shift to a higher level. Uh, for the question is, Salem, I have for you, how do I know when it's time to shift from one level to another? Whenever you find yourself fighting the same enemies over and over again. Oh, I wish I could stay right there. Well, whenever you, when you are fighting the same enemies you fought last year and the same stuff you dealt with in 2012, 2013, and here you are fighting the same giant in 2015, I got news for you. If you're fighting the same devils, it's probably because you're on the same level. I, I wish I had a witness here. Oh, so somebody missed that. I said, I said, if you're fighting the same devils, that means you own the you own the same level. There, there's some stuff that used to bother you that shouldn't bother you no more. That there's some stuff that used to make you quit shouldn't make you quit no more. 
I, I got news for you. You hurt my feelings one time, but baby, you ain't going to hurt my feelings the next time because some devils I got to outfight and some devils I outgrow. I wish I, I, wish I had a witness here. Uh, are y'all going to help me preach this morning here? I tell you, there are two types of devils in life, those you got to outfight and the devils you got to outgrow. When you fighting Goliath, you got to outfight that giant. But you, when you're dealing with jealous people, you got to outgrow. I, I wish I had a witness here. That's, that, that, that's why, let me tell you, every fight ain't worth your time. Every argument ain't worth your breath. Because well, let me tell you, when you're an eagle, eagles don't do chicken stuff. I wish I had a witness here. And, 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 and so when you come at me with the same stuff that used to trip me up before, baby, it's not that I'm better than you. I have outgrown the level that you're currently on. And the stuff on my level, I, do, I wish I had a uh, let, me, let me tell you, I got news for somebody this morning. Stop fighting below your level. I said stop fighting below your level. I, uh, don't fight stuff that's beneath you. Don't stay up about stuff that's beneath you. I wish I had a witness here. Uh, Jesus tells the disciples to cross over uh, because, watch this, when you cross over, some stuff get left behind. In other words, I came to tell somebody, if you want to lose some of your devil, then why don't you just raise your level? I said, if you want to lose some of your devils, why don't you? I'm going to preach myself happy. If you want to lose some of your devils, why don't you raise your level? Because the other side has its own struggles and its own issues. And you can't be successful at the next level if you're still dealing with stuff on the last level. And yet the power behind this passage is seen in the fact that crossing over was Jesus' suggestion. The disciples didn't ask Jesus to cross over. Jesus made the suggestion. And the reason Jesus made the suggestion is because the disciples didn't know that crossing over was an option. I wish I had a witness here. Uh, they believed that when they reached the banks of the sea that they had went as far as they could go. That this was now the limit, this was now the border, this was now the boundary. We, all we can do is turn around and go in another direction. Yeah. They believe they had reached their limit. But notice Jesus makes the, de the decision at the end of the day. Yeah. The text says right there for my expositors in the room, it says when evening was come. Yeah. Now Jesus makes a suggestion about crossing over when it's almost nighttime. When it's almost time to go to bed, when nighttime is a time to reflect on what you have already accomplished throughout the day. But Jesus says, at the nighttime, let us cross over to the other side. The question, why would Jesus expose another option when the day was almost over? In other words, why wait? Why would he wait until I get to the limit to rip the cover off and let me know there is another level? Um, this is a word for people who believe you have topped out, yeah. for people who believe you have reached a dead end, yeah. for somebody who believe you at the pinnacle, at the top of your game, that you can't get better, that you're at the limit of your resources and your strength. I came to tell somebody what often looks like the ending yeah, yeah. is often just the beginning. Yeah. What look, Somebody ought to shout with me right there. What looks like the end is often just the beginning. Oh, I came to tell somebody God has a way. Uh, when it looks like it's an end, God has a way of exposing another option. You do know God has the option to make the end into the beginning. Yeah, yeah. And God can make the beginning into the end. Yeah, yeah. For you do know Sunday school folk, God said, I am Alpha and Omega. Yeah. I am the beginning and the end. Yeah. Which means God always has another option. He has the option to turn the end into a beginning. And the beginning into the end. Uh, well, let me give you an example. Y'all look like y'all know what I'm talking about. A woman who had only a handful of meal left in her barrel. It looked like she was at the alpha, at the omega of her life. That it was all over. She said, I'm going to make one more cake. Me and my son going to eat. We're going to lay down and die because we are at the end of our rope. But when she took the Lord at his word, hallelujah to the Lamb. When she took God at his word, what looked like Omega turned into Alpha. Because the moment she tapped out of her resources, she tapped in the God's resources. I wonder, is there anybody here who God turned your end into your beginning? 
When God turned your omega, I wish I had a praying church here. Let, let me come look close. The doctor said this is your end, uh, but God stepped in and turned your omega into your alpha. Let me, TX, you said this was your end, uh, but God made a way out of no way, made $2 stretch. I wish I had a witness here. God can turn your end uh, into your beginning. to be careful who you say it's all over because I got news for you just when you think it's over that's when God takes over I said just when you think it's over God has a way of taking over Amen. this is not only true for bad stuff but God has a way of turning your best days yeah. into your greater days yeah. God has a way of turning your best accomplishments yeah. and letting you know that eyes have not seen yeah. ears have not heard Neither has it entered into the heart of men what thing the Lord has prepared for them. I wish I had a witness here. I came to tell somebody, baby, it's time for you to raise your expectation. Stop. Oh, oh, let, me, let, me, let me move on here. Let me tell you, the Bible says, the Bible says, uh, you got to know that you ain't seen nothing yet. Just it's time to shift to another level. Just when you think you have accomplished all you can in life, let me tell you, God has a way of letting you know you ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, and God has a way of letting you know that just when you think God is at his best, when you got God all figured out, when you know how God operates, when you know how God functions, when you know God how God thinks, when you know how God pre-plans, when you know how God works, when you know how God orchestrates, God has a way of doing a new thing that is beyond your comprehension. Anybody had God to do a new thing? God. God, God has a way of showing you, baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. I, I know you read what I did for Moses, but you ain't seen nothing yet. I, I know you heard what I done for Daniel, but you ain't seen nothing yet. I, I know what you heard, what I did for Paul, but baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. And I got news for, I don't care how old you are, how educated you are, you ain't seen nothing yet. Just wait for God to take you from this level uh, to a Somebody ought to tell somebody, let's cross, let's, let, let's cross this morning. It says, we, we've been on this level too long. We've been on this side too long. We've been talking about this thing too long. It's time for us, as my grandmother say, put some foot to your prayers. It's time for somebody to get off your knees and get on your feet and start putting one foot in front of the other. It's time to move. Well, let me go a little closer. Here. We said, I hear God telling somebody. Uh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Yet crossing over requires battling through. Now don't think this thing is going to be easy. Don't think going from one level to another is going to be easy. That just because you read a book that you're on the next level. That just because you got a pen that you're on the next level. Just because you change your ringtone that you're on the next level. No, baby, you got some battles you got to fight. You got some demons you got to deal with. You got some adversities you got to fight through. Don't think you're just going to walk up in here and slip to, from one level to another level. Uh, it, it, it's, some, it's some struggle that you have to go through because between this side and the other side is an unexpected but a pre-planned stone. It was unexpected because the disciples didn't know anything about it. But it was pre-planned because Jesus knew about it. I wish I had a witness here. It was pre-planned because don't think Jesus didn't get the seven-day forecast. Don't, don't think Jesus didn't know what was expecting on the middle of the sea. But when Jesus declares, let us cross over, he exposes the destination, but he does not expose the process. The question, why would Jesus, why wouldn't Jesus tell them about the stone? I, I, I came to ask, but Lee, why, why wouldn't Jesus tell them about a storm? It would seem logical if they knew about the storm, they could be better prepared for the storm. Lord, if you know I got a fight on tomorrow, please tell me about the fight today so I can be prepared when the fight comes tomorrow. I wish I had a witness here. Uh, but Jesus understood when you, pre you don't prepare for storm. You prepare for your destination. I wish I had a witness here. He said, don't, don't, don't. I, the woman with the issue of blood leaves home by saying in her mind, if I can touch the hem of his gone, 
I shall be made whole. Nowhere does she talk about how far she had to walk. Nowhere does she talk about how big the crowd was. Nowhere does she talk about how tired she was. She does not talk about how she has to struggle to get dressed. She does not talk about if she has to walk uphill, down a corner, up an alley. Because in her mind, what's important is not what I go through, but it's about where I'm going. I wish I had a witness here. And she said, I will not raise my adversity to the level of my destination. I got news for somebody. Stop talking about what the devil is doing and talk about where God is taking you. Amen. I wish I had a witness here. I said, don't raise your adversity to the level of your destination. I refuse to give my adversity more time than I give my destination. Uh, Paul says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. The lesson is, baby, Salem, don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. Be focused on where you're going. In the middle of the, in the, middle of the journey, they encounter a great wind of storm. A great wind, a storm of wind. Yet, based on their reaction, this was an unusual storm. Because the disciples were experienced fishermen and sailors. So this wasn't the first time they'd been in a storm. Uh, but but if, if they were experienced, then why were they freaking out in the midst of this storm? If this ain't your first rodeo, if this ain't your first storm, if you have been through hell and high water before, why are you freaking out? Now, I wish I had a witness here. Uh, but, but to understand their reaction, you have to examine how the storm is described. The Bible says it was a great, somebody say great. It was a great storm of wind. When the disciples compared the storm with their prior experience, they quickly understood this was something different. That this is a new experience. This is something that we haven't dealt with before. And I got news for you, Salem. Whenever you begin to experience things for the first time, whenever you begin to experience storm that you haven't seen before, that lets you know you're about to go to another level. Every storm in Scripture has only one purpose. That's for revelation. Somebody say revelation. Every storm that God allows in your life is either to reveal something about God or to reveal something about you. Everything God takes you through is either to reveal something about him or to reveal something about yourself. It was during a storm that Jesus demonstrated he could walk on water. And it was during a storm that Peter learned if I stay focused on Jesus, I can walk just like Jesus. Therefore, what Peter saw in the storm was actually what Peter was wanting to see in himself. And, 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 and if this was a great storm, then the storm was sent to reveal great things. Yeah. I said a great storm was sent to reveal great things. This is why Jesus remained asleep during the storm. Wow. Now, Brother Coleman, this bothered me. Here it is, the only time in Scripture yeah. where the Bible says Jesus was sleeping. Amen. Now, the Bible says he got tired. The Bible said that in the Garden of Gethsemane he fell and he was in the midst of a struggle that the sweat fell like great drops of blood. But nowhere does it say Jesus was sleeping. Yeah. But right here in the text, the Bible says in the middle of a storm, yeah. Jesus was asleep in the back of the ship. I wish I had a praying church here. Uh, and even more shocking was he was sleeping, it seems like the moment the disciples needed him the most. I came to ask somebody, have you ever felt like Jesus was sleeping? Amen. You praying your best prayers, and it looked like Jesus is sleeping. Uh, you fasting, you going to church, even going to Sunday school, but it looks like Jesus is sleeping. Uh, you, you're anointing yourself with all, and you're doing all that you can. You're waking up late in the midnight hour saying, Father, I stretch my hand to thee, but it looks like Jesus is sleeping. I wish I had a witness here. Have you ever felt like Jesus was sleeping? Yet, you're in the midst of a storm, and the ship is beginning to break up, but Jesus is asleep in the back of the ship. 
Yet this storm, watch this, was a prepared storm. And it was an expected storm. And the reason Jesus was sleeping was because the storm was doing what the storm was supposed to be doing. I wish I had a brand church here. Uh, Jesus prepared the storm. He knew, but what, watch this in the text. The Bible says the storm was beating against the ship. Somebody ought to shout, the ship. It says that the ship was breaking up. It said the waves were beating against the ship. It said the ship was breaking up. I said the waves was beating against the ship. Somebody shout the ship. The ship was breaking up. Somebody shout the ship. But guess what? The storm didn't touch the disciples. I wish I had a praying church here. The storm was tearing up the ship, but guess the, what? The disciples were still standing. I got news for you, baby. It's, it ain't just about the ship. In other words, the disciples were panicking because of what was breaking up. Yet Jesus was sleeping because of who was still standing. I got news for you, my brothers and sisters. Instead of panicking over the stuff that is breaking up in your life, you ought to start shouting about the stuff that's still standing in your life. Oh, let me tell you, I got news for you. The ship may break up, but that don't mean I got to break up. Just because the ship is going to go down don't mean I have to go down. I came to tell somebody, if you want to see the power of God, stop panicking over the stuff that the storm is breaking up and start shouting over the fact that through hell and high water, baby, you're still getting up every morning. In spite of the storm that you're going on, let me tell you, it ain't about to ship. I don't care if they laying off on your job. Greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. I got news for you just because the ship go down. Don't mean you got to go down. Amen. Just because everybody else is going down. Don't mean you got to go down. Because the, the ship is nothing more than a vehicle to get me to where God wants me to be. Just because the ship is going down doesn't mean I have to go down. The purpose of the storm was not to reveal how great the ship was. But it's to reveal how great the disciples were. And if you, I got news for you Salem. If you don't hear anything else here, please hear this. If you have survived un until this point, if you're still standing up until this point, then baby, you waited too late to give up right now. I got news for you. You've been through too much. You have endured too much. You have fought too many battles. You have climbed too many mountains to talk about giving up right now. The only reason Jesus woke up was not to stop the ship from breaking up, but to stop the disciples from breaking up. Um, they panicked because they put their hope in the ship and not in themselves. They go to Jesus and they say, Master, do you care if we perish? Don't you know we're going down in the ship? Don't you know the ship is filling up with water? And how can you sleep in the midst of a storm? But the disciples didn't realize if the storm had not killed you yet. I wish I had a witness here. If the devil hadn't taken you out yet. I wish I had a praying church here. If cancer hadn't taken your life yet. If diabetes ain't taken you out yet. If crazy relatives ain't destroyed you yet. If crazy boyfriends ain't ran you crazy yet. If lying folk ain't made you lose your mind yet, I wish I had a witness here. I tell somebody it's too late to give up right now. I've been in this thing too long. I have come to the middle of this journey. I came to talk to people who have taken the devil's best shot, but you still haven't laid down yet. I want to talk to people who have the devil has hit you one blow after another. But every morning you getting up saying this is the day that the Lord has made. I want to talk to some folk that you should have left the church a long time ago. You, they done hurt your feelings. They done sent you home crying. But every Sunday morning, you put the same suit on. You put the same dress on. And you say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm talking to folk that had friends leave you. I'm talking to folk who had friends stab you in the back. 
but baby, you still got a smile on your face. You're still saying God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Why won't you give up? Because I've been through the fire. I've been through the flood. But God, I wish I had a brand church in. Uh, somebody ought to slap somebody and say, I can't give up now. I can't give up now. I done killed too many giants to give up now. I done dealt with too many issues to give up now. I done been through too many mountains to give up now. I done came out too many valleys to give up now. I, I cried my last tear yesterday. I, today is time to smile uh, because this is the day that the Lord has made. Uh, I'm not going to give up now. I won't go down. I said I won't go down. I won't go down. I won't go down. I'm in the middle of this thing. And the reason why I won't give up on this thing is before I set sail, I made sure Jesus was in the ship with me. And so whenever I get to my breaking point, that's Jesus waking up point. Whenever I'm about to give up, Jesus wakes up. Whenever I'm about to go down, Jesus gets up. Whenever I'm about to throw it in, Jesus puts his hand out. I came to tell somebody, don't break up, wake Jesus up. Don't give up, wake him up. And you want to know how to wake him up? Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I stretch my hand under thee. How do I wake him up, precious Lord? Take my hand. Lead me on and let me stand. How do I wake him up? Somebody say, Jesus. Somebody ought to shout, Jesus. Shout Jesus. Somebody ought to shout Jesus. And when Jesus got up, I said when Jesus got up, I said when Jesus got up, he didn't get up excited. He didn't get up nervous. He just looked at the stone and said peace. Anybody had the Lord say peace? You, it seemed like you were about to go down, but God just said, peace. It looked like you was about to lose your mind, but Jesus said, peace. And what was throwing, I wish I had a witness. Peace, be still. And immediately, the wind stopped blowing. The waves died down. I wish I had a praying church. It stopped raining. This is my imagination talking. The skies turn to blue skies. Black clouds turn to white fluffy clouds. There was all no more lightning. There was a now rainbow in the sky. Now I got a, I got news for you. Say, how come when the disciples said peace, nothing happened? But when Jesus said peace, let me tell you, you got to make sure the right man is talking for you. I wish I had a praying church. He said, peace, be still. And he looks at his disciples and says, oh, ye of little faith. Jesus tells them, you could have stopped this yourself if you had faith the size of a mustard seed. I got news for somebody. Whatever you're going through, you can stop it if you just stand up on your faith and say, peace, be still. Anybody want to cross over today? And what I got news for you, when the storm was over, when the storm was over, they made it to the other side. I got news for you, the storm wasn't sent to destroy them. The storm was sent to speed up the journey. Sometimes God sends some adversity to stop you from walking. And to get you to get your wings and start flying away. Thank God for his word. Thank God for his message. Somebody give the Lord a great big hand of praise. I'm crossing over. I'm crossing over. The door of the church is open. I'm leaving some stuff behind. I'm leaving devils behind. I'm leaving issues behind. The same stuff I fought last week. I won't fight this week. Some things I'm outgrowing, some things I'm out maturing, some things I'm getting beyond, and I'm getting beyond. Let us cross over to the other side. We offer Christ to you this morning. If you've been on the same level day after day, 
if you're tired of dealing with the same devils over and over again, I dare you to get in the ship, endure the storm, and cross over to the other side. I'm not here to tell you it's going to be easy. I'm not here to tell you you're going to have some good days and some bad days. I'm not here to tell you that everything's going to be smooth. I'm here to tell you Christians have problems. Christians have enemies. Christians have long nights. Christians cry. Christians hurt. But Christians endure. We overcome. We fight through. We make it through. We endure it because our God sits high and he looks low. We offer Christ to you. Somebody ought to give the Lord a great big hand of praise for what the Lord, what the Lord has done. Anybody had the Lord just say peace? Somebody, anybody had the Lord say peace? You were sick and he just said peace. Tears was running down your eyes, he just said peace. You had tragedy in your life, he just said peace. Just peace.